Welcome to this series of tutorials on how to create your own circuit boards. We will be covering the Tony transfer method to make cheap, easy and simple circuit boards like this. It could be single or dual layer circuit boards. And we will be covering the UV exposure method to make a little more professional looking boards. This method is a little more expensive but the result is much better. Creating a circuit board like this will take between one and a half and two and a half hours and the total cost of one of these boards will be around one or two dollars. But of course you cannot buy chemicals for one board so you'll have to spend a little bit more the first time. This first video will show you which materials to use for each method. You'll need a few empty plastic containers. You'll need a pair of chemical gloves and you'll need a pair of safety glasses. You'll need some basic chemicals, acetone and alcohol. And you'll need some water. And you'll need some very fine sandpaper. Or you could use this nylon final polish stuff. You'll need some standard adhesive tape. You'll need some small drill bits around 0.8 to 1 millimeter. And you will need a Dremel or a drill press. You will need an etchant. We will cover this later. And as a final touch you could add a tin plating with a tin plating solution. This is optional though. You'll need some raw circuit board. You'll need a laser printer and some photo laser paper. You'll need an iron, a laminator or a heat press. For the UV exposure method you will need a little bit more but it should be easy to pick them up. You'll need some raw circuit board. This can be pre-coated with photo resist or you'll have to coat it yourself. I like using this dry film photo resist. This is a negative resist where the ones you buy pre-coated are usually positive resists. You can also use this spray resist to cover your bolts. And this is also a positive resist. You will need a chemical to develop your board. With a negative photo resist you will use sodium carbonate. And for the positive resist, you'll use sodium hydroxide. You'll need a transparent film. Note that this comes in different types for laser and inkjet printers. If you use a negative resist, like I will be using in the tutorial, you'll need to print the circuit designs in negative. If you use a positive resist, like the pre-coded poles, you will have to use a positive print. You will need a way to expose your board to UV light. You can use an LED array like this, or you can use a UV fluorescent tube, or you can even use the sun. And if you want solar mask, you will need some of the solar mask film. I use a brand called Dynamask, and this is also a negative type. And you will need a glass plate like this. And you will need a room where you can turn the lights off. And now for the PCB etchant. There are three types of etchant that are very popular. The first one will be a mixture of hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide. Now, some people say that this is very toxic and dangerous for the environment. And it is. But it is not any worse than any of the other etchants. Now, the second will be ferric chloride. This is a very common etchant, but it stinks like hell and it stains. The third etchant will be cubic chloride. And this is the toxic byproduct from the first etchant. 
But the catch is that this is also a byproduct of the second agent, ferric chloride. You just can't see it. And thereby people think it's less toxic. But it's not. The good thing about cubic chloride is that it's reusable over and over again. Ferric chloride will wear out slowly when you use it, and the mixture of hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide will go bad in about one day. Any of these agents can under no circumstances be dumped into a kitchen sink. They have to be disposed properly. The hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide will be available at your hardware store. And the ferric chloride will most likely be available where by electronic components. Please note that all of these etchings will release fumes that will corrode steel and iron, so don't use it inside your house. In the tutorial I'll be showing how to remove oxidation using sandpaper. I do recommend you use sandpaper when you're creating circuit boards, but if you want to clean an old board, you can use toilet cleaner. Add the toilet cleaner and let it work for about one minute. And after about one minute, just wipe the toilet cleaner away. And it should remove oxidation from your board. But remember to clean the board with water very fast after you apply the toilet cleaner or the board will re-oxidize very quickly. In the tutorials I will be creating single-sided boards like this. To create a double-sided board, add registration marks to at least two corners. By doing this, you can drill holes for the board and use these to align the back layer. Let's pretend there's still cover on this board. We will cover one side with some transparent plastic tape. Try to get a type of tape that is as wide as your board. And with one side covered in tape, just follow the procedure to make the other side. And once this side is done, cover it with tape, turn the board around, remove the tape, and do the same thing again.